Hi, welcome to today's webinar, Exploring DODAF and Other Architecture Frameworks in Core. My name is Eva Dace and I will be your host during today's webinar, being presented by Ron Kratsky. Ron holds the position of Principal Systems Engineer with Vitex Professional Services. He's a retired U.S. Navy officer with over 20 years of engineering experience managing nuclear engineering and combat systems on surface ships. He was introduced to the systems engineering practice near the end of his naval career while conducting mission and capability analysis for the Navy staff. For the last 12 years, he has worked as a systems engineer, supporting advanced systems development for a number of federal government agencies. Ron was introduced to CORE in 2007 and used it to manage system development tasks on three different projects over the last five years. Now before we get started, I need to review a few housekeeping matters. Please take a few moments to get comfortable with your webinar control panel, as this is how you'll be able to submit your questions or comments throughout the presentation. We will address questions at the end of each section and also at the end of the webinar, so send me your questions early and often. Next, I'd like to answer our most asked question. The webinar is being recorded today. You will be able to find the recording in the webinar archive in the resources section of our website within the next 24 hours. Today's webinar is brought to you by Vitex's newly redesigned MBSE Fundamentals course. To learn more about how to bring premier engineering techniques to your team, please click on the link you see in your chat panel. And I'm going to chat that out to you now. So now, without further ado, let me hand it over to our presenter. Welcome, Ron. It's great to have you with us again. Good afternoon, Eva. I'm glad to be here. Um, today, we're going to talk about um, architectures, really operational architectures. And I'm going to talk at length about where architectures come from and several different architecture frameworks. And then eventually, we'll get to the DODAF architecture framework and explore how that framework works in, you know, or how core works to populate views in that, in that DODAF framework. So to begin with, we talk about frameworks, or we talk about architectures, but we, I think that there's a mystery around what an architecture is. Many times as systems architects, we say, what's the architecture of the system? What does that really mean? Well, you get, you, we need to go back and understand what an architecture is. Architecture has been done for centuries, not necessarily by systems engineers slash systems architect, but more, more so by traditional architects. Every, every sky, I, I have this little saying here that every skyscraper in the modern world is used the practice of architecture to design and build the building. And that's sort of what we're doing when we talk about architectures and information systems or how we, how we relate systems to operational architectures. And just as architects that are building a building have to provide several views of that building, so do we as systems engineers and system architects. And that architect has to satisfy a diverse set of people, and so do we. Take the case of a new house. If you're building a new house, you have to have a whole bunch of different drawings, and the architect has to provide all those drawings. The homeowners association wants to see what the outside of the house is going to look like and make sure that you have planted trees in the right place and you don't have a fence that's too high. But as far as what goes inside the house, that's not really their purview. The county building authority has to see the structural drawings, the plumbing drawings, the electrical drawings, all those things to make sure you're complying with all the codes and standards for building that building. And what do you want to see? You want to, you want to understand that, that the house looks nice from the outside and that your, uh, your man cave or or your kitchen is big enough to do all the things that, that you want to do. And finally, your spouse, if you're a guy, that is, your spouse wants to make sure that the landscaping is correct to make sure that she knows where the flower garden and the patio is going to be. So each of these provide different views to this overall house that you're going to build. And each of this, the architecture of the house, 
is composed of all those views, whether it's the mechanical drawing for the plumbing, the electrical drawing for the electrical controls, you may have even have in a new house today, a network drawing for the network that goes on inside the house. You have to have a structural drawing to make sure that the roof trusses and all of the roofs and the, where the windows are properly placed uh, will we'll meet all the structural standards. So that makes up the overall architecture of the house. So some definitions when we talk about architecture in the systems engineering and information systems world. So the architect is a guy that has the responsibility for creating this architecture. An artifact, an architectural artifact or sometimes called a view is a specific document that reports on one particular aspect or one particular set of relationships in that architecture. An architectural description is a collection or a set of these views. The framework, the architectural framework, is really a methodology, I don't know, it's not a methodology because there's, there, we do have an architectural methodology, but the framework lays out what the suggested artifacts and descriptions are that should be used to create the overall architecture. And the architecture methodology is a, is a way, is, is a term that we use to describe how we approach doing a particular architecture. A few more definitions here. There's a process which is a set of actions that are directed towards producing the architecture or the architectural description. There's a taxonomy which is the way that a particular architecture framework organizes and categorizes the uh, artifacts and the views. And I guess the architecture is the fundamental organization of it. And then we talk about enterprise architecture. And the enterprise architecture really talks about the whole enterprise, the business processes, the technologies that support that, the information systems. Enterprise can be very much a a uh, framework or a perspective name that we put on things. The enterprise to the CEO is the entire um, company. The enterprise to the to the uh, uh, chief financial officer primarily deals with just those financial reporting systems and reporting functions that he has to do. So he looks at the enterprise in that way. And whereas the chief architect um, for an engineering company would probably look at his inter his enterprise as all the things that he has to do and all the interfaces he has to make in order to do the engineering function of the company. But enterprise really takes a more holistic look at, at uh, an, an entity. So where do we get all of these architectures. How did we start into this what's now a common day um, practice and principle? You know, developing if you're a if you're a military person, the DODAF architecture, um, or if you're out in business, just a business architecture. Well there's a guy by the name of John Zachman back in back in the eighties while at I while he was at IBM he started looking at how do we look at information systems. And he, in, he observed a couple of key elements about information systems. First, there is a descriptive structure of, of information systems, an architecture. And it's, the simil it's very similar to the architecture that goes into buildings, airplanes, and other things in, in the industrial world. I use the example of the building structure. And that's actually, if you go back and you listen to some of John Zachman's um, lectures, he uses that very same example about if I'm building a building, what do I need to, what do I, how do I, if I'm the architect of a building, how do I develop that, 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 that whole building? So he sat down and developed a way to look at information systems architectures 
and he based his methodology on two things really a set of fundamental communication interrogatives and I'll go through what those are in a moment and he looked at the transformation of this abstract idea into something that he could inst an instantiation of this abstract idea um, there's a theoretical aspect to that where they talk about how they how he got there or he'll talk and he talks about how he how he got there based upon Greek mythology but really he's trying to transform this abstract idea the layers of his model into something you can you can understand so this is what his model looked like um, there's several different versions of this but if you go across the top the questions he asked are the what the how the where the who wh when and why and then along the left hand side of this model you'll see scope business model system model technology and detailed representation really what he's looking at here is the context the scope is the context the business model how it's conceptualized the systems model is logically how you're going to get there the technology model provides the physical entities to achieve those functions in the in the concept up above and the detailed representations on the bottom talk about the very detailed, very specific uh, items that go into the architecture. So let's look at the interrogatives. He asked several questions, and these are the types of things you have to answer when you're putting your architecture together. What are you trying to achieve? What's the data and what's the elements that are required in the architecture? how is more the activities and functions that go into the architecture where is is the network if you will or, or the location of this inform of of your of your architecture now that seems very specific just the network but it could also be you know the geographical separation of a couple of entities in your business or the the uh, the differences in in in, uh, in geographical location of the elements that are in your your uh, military architecture so it's not just the network it has more to do with the location of the business entities and fun and and where where they're located the who is the people in the organization who is actually going to be involved in achieving the goals of this architecture it's called the performers or the operational nodes in many architectures the when is the time frame now the time frame is not the cycle time of the information technology it really deals more with how do I time phase all of the capabilities I want to bring into this architecture how do I bring them in in a fashion so they don't interfere with one another what's the logical buildup for my architecture and the why is the motivation why are we doing this what what are we trying to achieve what are the goals so these interrogatives these questions enable a comprehensive and complete description of the complex idea of your architecture the next thing that he talks about on the levels and I briefly talked about those on the left hand side of the drawing are the um, the, the instantiation that, that I talked about earlier he talks about identification definition representation specification and configuration if you look over to the right hand side you'll see the types of information that are in there so identification is really the scope of the project and the audience over the, on the right hand side of this table talks about who was who would nominally be interested in that information so identification the scope of what we're doing is really something that an executive manager is interested in he the executive manager is not interested in the detailed configuration the way that a technician would want would want to see information on the very bottom of the uh, of that uh, row on the or the column on the right hand side so you really have to think about when you're providing information in an architecture 
who is it going to who's going to see the information are you giving the information at the right level and the right information so that the decision maker can understand what is going on in the architecture or so that he or she can take action on what's in the architecture so again the instantiation of types of information as you go down through the types of information as you go down to the next one business model is more of the business manager the systems model is where the architect is he's looking at the overall systems of systems aspect the technology the physical instantiation of the system is where the engineer is located and really the architect and engineer those lines kind of blur a little bit <clears throat> there's really no no clear boundary there and then the technician or the actual developer of the individual piece parts is looking at the detailed information that he needs to get that particular piece of information put together so if we look at it in a different in a different framework another view of this Zachman framework get a little more um, concrete if you will on what types of things that need to be seen so if you're at the scope level and a business executive if you wanna if his act if his question is is who are we doing this architecture for how are we gonna bring it in and what's our motivation then you can go back across the very top row to the scope and the planning and provide him answers along those lines many times you'll see a chart like this in an architecture in an architecture framework or an architecture description when they're saying I want to do a, a federal enterprise architecture framework or something like that you'll see a, a chart like this that'll lay this out and it'll, it'll identify which views go into which which bucket of each of the of each cell of this of this table and there is a view like that <coughs> for DODAF I don't think I have a copy of that in this presentation but you can find it out there on the CIO website so these this table this concept was started in the 80s and it's filtered down through architectures all through the 90s and it exists even today so what other types of architecture frameworks are out there now this Zachman framework is not really so much a framework it's really a methodology now the framework should tell us how to put individual views together to answer some of these questions so there's a list of several of them there's an open group architecture framework um, and this is the way they look at it and they look at it more in terms of business visions and drivers and how it informs informs but there's some key there's some key um, terms in here you'll see up here in this part right here that we have this informs the capability so here's capability we know that there's DODAF capabilities in here what's the business vision or what's the mission what are the business needs what things do you need to transfer back and forth in your architecture in order to make it work so there's there's all of these items that go into this architecture so TOGAF is an architecture framework and you can look that up I think it's a it is a as an it's a like I say it's it's the total uh, open group architecture framework the federal enterprise architecture framework is yet another framework now that the FIAF framework if you go to the whitehouse.gov website they'll talk about this they'll give you links to the FIAF but the FIAF is where the Federal Enterprise Architecture Framework is how agencies in the federal government put together their architecture framework. And they have a methodology which is on the upper left hand side here that talks about, about what are the business drivers, what are the things that are driving our architecture. And they talk about understanding the business and the data, the applications and the technology that need to go into that and then working that across understanding what the standards are and developing the business data application and technology architecture you see how these four levels in the middle in this architecture model they parallel the Zachman model pretty well technology architecture is at the bottom the business architecture is at the top and how do we get there what's our vision and our strategic direction and they talk a lot about how we transition from where we are now to where we need to go 
and then they have another corresponding description that talks about or another corresponding table that talks about their artifacts and their description so <clears throat> the planner owner designer builder and subcontractor perspective those kind of parallel those five layers that are in the in the Zachman architecture they talk about the line of business the semantic model and it goes across here and if you were actually to look at a federal enterprise architecture framework and look through all of these you will get an idea though they have a definition of each one of these and you'll see what each one of those one each one of these architecture views what each one of those views require and finally there is now we're starting to get into the DOD world there's a NATO architecture framework called the NAF and again they talk about they kind of turn things on the side they talk about mission space information applications and technical infrastructure and then down the left hand side they talk about what needs to be done how it needs to be done how we're, how are we going to implement that here's the community of interest there there's a there is also and I don't have slides on all of these there is um, MODAF which is the Ministry of Defense architecture framework MODAF is the uh, British version the English version of um, of uh, DODAF and they're very very parallel in fact DODAF 2.0 when that was released a couple years ago it brought forward and incorporated a number of views out of MODAF what happened was that we created DODAF 1.0 and 1.5 the uh, uh, Great Britain looked at it and said that's a good idea they adapt they looked at it made some changes to it and came up with MODAF and then we said the US uh, government said you know there's a lot of good ideas in MODAF and we came out with DODAF 2.0 and there's also a Canadian architecture framework which is how the, the Canadian defense does their architecture framework and there's also there is an initiative by the CIO the DOD CIO right now to bring together the NATO, the MODAF, the DOD architecture, US DOD architecture framework, and the Canadian architecture framework all together and to integrate it into one giant architecture framework. So that gives us a view of the various different types of architecture frameworks that are out there. So Eva, do we have any questions before I go into how we do um, DODAF specifically? I do, Ron. I have a couple for you. Um, my first one is from Mark, and this this came in at the very beginning of your presentation. If that gives you uh, any kind of helpful context, he asked, okay. "How would you contrast architecture with design?" So again, architecture. I'm going to uh, let me slide back up here. Architecture, understanding how the things need to work together to fulfill the mission areas and strategic objectives you're trying to fulfill really occurs in the upper part of this of, of the of the framework if you will if I could draw a line between technology model and system modeler I would say that above that is more architecture below that is more detailed design now there's an obvious link between those two and I'm going to talk about how we do that in core and you know I think it'll also become evident when I start talking about that how a systems development systems design and development as opposed to an operational architecture development there there's got to be a certain linkage between those two otherwise you will never achieve what you wanted to do in your strategic objectives you're going to have systems that are not closely integrated with what your strategic objectives are all right I uh, have one more for you. This one is from Robert. He wants you to go back to chart 11. He asks, what do the darkened data blocks under how, when, who, where mean? Um, I, I, don't, uh, I, don't, I can't recall where I took this out of. I don't know what the darkened uh, blocks mean. Other than I think if you look at that, it's more of, the, uh, more of a technical detailed architecture, um, more of the physical systems part of the architecture, if you will. 
All right, thank you. Uh, that's all we have for this section. Okay, so let me go down. So what is this stuff called DODAF? <laughs> what does DODAF really mean? Well, so much like all those other architecture frameworks that we have, DOD set up a way to do and um, there's a couple of important here. This is right out of the uh, the DODAF version 2.0 introduction. And so the architecture framework is an overarching comprehensive framework that provides a conceptual model to enable developers of architecture to facilitate DOD managers at all level at all levels. So a couple of key points here. It's an overarching framework. It's a conceptual model and it enables people that are working for DOD developing architectures to facilitate DOD managers. I cannot stress and emphasize enough how architectures one of the main reasons for developing an operational architecture is to allow DOD managers to understand the complexity of this complicated system, system of systems really that you're trying to put together and that you have to provide the information to the right level of detail to allow the decision maker to understand what you're achieving and to make a decision and to defend his architecture. In order to do those three things, to understand, defend, and make decisions on the architecture, he doesn't need to see and he probably will not understand the wiring diagram for a circuit board. But he does and will understand how information is passed amongst operational nodes in his architecture and how that information is passed support is supportive of the missions and strategy that he's laid out. It's still important for you to make all the links between the lower level and the higher level in your architecture to make sure it's properly integrated. But one of the reasons we have an OV1 and an OV2 is that it supports the senior decision makers in making their in understanding the architecture. So I, I talked about these a moment ago, but just the overarching comprehensive framework, conceptual models, facilitating managers, and support of more effective decision making through organized information sharing. That's one of the, these are the key points behind doing operational architectures. Just a quick note on the evolution of DODAF. This is a little bit dated, but we're now out here at, at, at version 2.0, but it started out as just a C4 ISR architecture in the early, in the mid nineties and progressed through that. When I was on the joint staff, as, as Eva mentioned, um, doing uh, operational uh, analysis is when we transitioned into about the time we were doing that we were making questions about why we were doing the C4 ISR architecture and then we started working on making the transition to DODAF uh, one, version 1.0. So version 2.0 was published in May 2009. There's a 2.0 out there right now, 2.02 out there right now. And it continues to undergo review and change. And I, I talked earlier about there's some talk about trying to integrate uh, several of the architectures together into one cohesive architecture set. So DODAF is fulfilled by a set of views. There's, there's AVs, there's C capability views, operational views, project views, service views, systems views, and data and information views. Again, the capability views, well, the all views is really only two elements there. One is an overall architecture description. The second one deals more with the definitions and the taxonomy of, uh, that's used in the, in the architecture. About the capabilities and mission areas and what we're trying to achieve. Operational views really are the, are the meat of 
and operational architecture. And they talk about what operational activities and operational items are used by performers in the architecture. The project views talk about that the, the, the fact that I talked earlier about in Zachman Framework, how are we going to do this? What projects support providing the architecture that we're trying to get to? Systems and service views talk about how I'm, how I'm providing the services and the systems to support that operational architecture. And data and information views get down to the details of how the data and how the information is passed around in the architecture. If you go to DODAF version or volume 2.0, you'll find a detailed description and information regarding each, each of these viewpoints. Now, in core, as we start talking about core now, I'm, I'm going to transition now into how we do things in core. Does anybody have any questions on DODAF itself for me before I start talking about how we do things in core? Uh, I don't see any. I haven't had any for this section. Okay. So, a moment ago, I got asked the question about how does an architecture, what's, his, what's the difference between the systems design and the architecture? The right-hand side of, of this slide is really doing systems architecture. These are the primary, what's shown on here, are the primary elements that we use in core to do systems architecture. We talk about requirements and functions, talk about components, we talk about links and interfaces and items. So this right hand side is really the systems architecture. The left hand side of this slide talks about doing operational architectures. The do what well, I, I, we call them operational architectures, it's really the DODAF type architecture. We talk about performers, we talk about, well, to begin with, we talk about mission areas. So an architecture is trying to achieve a, a, a mission or a strategic goal, and it's, it's fulfilled by a series of capabilities that then become operational, act, that are based on operational activities. And the performers are trying to achieve something through operational activities, and they end up with operational items that need to be passed around across and the performers need information to be transferred so once you have this side this architecture facility side populated in your operational architecture then you can relate that and implement this operational architecture through one or more systems designs that you put together on this side on the right hand side of the slide So, in core, we have an architecture class. That architecture class achieves a mission, is composed of performers, is specified by capabilities, it's assigned to organizations, and it's implemented by program elements. Now, there's a distinct difference here between an organization and a performer. A performer is an element of an operational architecture that produces, consumes, or, pro or processes information. Those are the people that are actually doing or using the architecture to achieve that mission. The organization is an individual or unit that's assigned to achieve that architecture. Not to actually perform in the architecture per se, but someone who's responsible for developing parts of the architecture. There's always a program management and delivery part of an architecture that says, I'm going to achieve these capabilities by doing these programs, and this organization is going to work on that program element in order to achieve it. So I'm going to pause here for a moment. If there's any more, if there's any questions while I open up core and get into an operational architecture and I'll talk about how we can can make some of those how we populate the operational architecture and how we can make some of those views in DODAF. I have a few questions for you and actually before you uh, hop over to CORE, um, they want to see Lauren the would like more, right? to see yep, chart 19 
Uh, she says, is the diagram on chart 19 based on the DM2 in any way? Okay. The DM2 is a DODAF meta model that specifies how DODAF views the relationships behind their view of, of how an architecture should be put together. There is a parallel between this slide and DM2. DM2 has a thing I believe called operational nodes. We alias that to a performer, for example. DM2 has a relationship from a performer to a need line or from an operational node to a need line. They call it something different than connected to. The reason we have a different taxonomy, if you will, is because one of the underlying reasons is that we have a very specific language structure in core that was developed way before DM2. Um, I don't have a, <clears throat> excuse me, a complete map of this, this schema to DM2 at this point. And the reason we don't have that fully developed right now is because it is our understanding that DM2 that there are changes to DM2 right now that are occurring that have not yet been publicized and they will occur even more when the uh, when the future architecture framework comes out. So there's a parallel between this and DM2 but it is not based on DM2. But we can show a mapping from this to DM2. All right, I'm uh, moving on to slide 20 now. Um, Robert is asking, are the relationships you describe operational relationships rather than system relationships? So let me go, I, we, we see those relationships there. So most of those relationships are on the operational architecture side. Not all, this slide doesn't show all possible relationships from every element to another element. But those are primarily on this operational architecture side except you'll see that the architecture is composed of components and you will also see that I didn't populate everything in here but it's specified, the architecture is specified by capabilities and it's specified by requirements. I'm primarily focusing on the operational architecture side of things though. And notice as you go down through here all of these, the, the relationship between the left hand side and the right hand side of this slide all occurs through this implemented by relationship. Okay, so if you had a set of capabilities over here and you wanted to trace those capabilities, if you will, to the requirements on your system side, you can do that through this implemented by relationship. Operational items are implemented by items on the system side. Need lines are implemented by links on the system side. Operational nodes or performers are implemented by components on this side. Okay. Right. Anything else, Eva? Um, Court would like to have an example of. Um, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, Court would like to have an example of a program element. Um, a program element is. Um, Development of the, you know, my architecture requires development of a new radar. Radar development could, could be the program element. Uh, program elements can be further refined by one another into if I wanted to have a new radar development, it could be, um, you know, the radar antenna development, the radar receiver in de development, the radar, you know, um, transmitter development. Those might be assigned to different organizations, and they may each require a different length of time. I can show you a program element when getting the architecture, so you can look at. All what, right, what that's one it is. for this section. Okay. So. All right. Let me go into core here. So I have here uh, an architecture. That is, it's a tactical image management architecture. There is an example of this architecture in your, um, 
in your sample files. This, this is in the process of being updated to clean up a number of items and to make some of the views a little more explanatory and uh, make it easier for you to trace through those. It's one of my um, one of my uh, asks that I'm working on right now. But I wanted to walk through how to do an architecture or how to get into this this operational architecture. So first of all, if you've never dealt with operational architecture, if you haven't dealt on the architecture side, when you open a new project, you can't open the project in the base schema. When you open the project in the architecture schema, it extends the schema to provide all of those elements that I showed on the left-hand side of that slide. So you have to open a project in the, the uh, DODAP version 2.0 schema, and this is the version, this is for uh, Core 9. If you're on Core 8, you would be in, in this schema, okay? So I'm going to just uh, cancel out of that and go back into my into my architecture. And what you're going to find then is, in addition to on these facilities here, you're going to find this architecture development facility at the very top. And when you open that facility, you're going to find this top, this top uh, level here called archi this top folder here architecture. And you're going to have capability class in there. You're going to have some other uh, new ones operational activity, need line, operational item, operational tasks. You're going to have performers in there and uh, missions. And I think that pretty much covers it. There might be one or more other ones. And so you will be sitting here with this framework. Now, let me go into capabilities here. And so I have a set of capabilities listed here but I wanted to show you something on hierarchies here. When you look at hierarchy type, I have several new hierarchies in my list here. There's capability hierarchies here and there's some organizational and operational resource flow hierarchies here. And there might be one other one, project portfolio I think is, is another one that's in there. So the first thing you need to do after you've opened your schema in this way is you have to also import these additional hierarchies. So the way you do that is you go to core, import data file, and then navigate to wherever your core software is. To me it's on my root C drive, it probably isn't there for you guys. And you go to reports, DODAF 2.0, and you'll see two files here. One is the hierarchy definitions, which provides those additional hierarchies that I showed you earlier. And the other file you need to import, so you import that one. And the other file you need to import is the DODAF 2.0 viewpoint template. That imports all of the scripts, or excuse me, all of the document um, elements that we need to create any of the DODAF viewpoints. So you import those, and the way you do that, if you were going to import these definitions, you do it this way. You walk through, and when you get to this file, when, we, when you get to this screen here, excuse me, get to this screen here, you have to import it and import it into the project you just created. Okay? So once you have, those in, you have that imported, you'll have this folder here that says DODAF. 2.0 viewpoints, and you'll have all of these, the, the viewpoints populated in here now. It's very similar to starting, as you start up doing document generation on the system side. So after you've got that in here, in there, you've got the, both the document viewpoints and those, those hierarchies in here imported in. The hierarchies are, again, they're over here. If you look at hierarchy type, you'll see the new ones that are in here. Okay. Once you have those in there, you have to make one other relationship. You have to relate the architecture to the root DODEF folder. So you do that by using the reported on relationship and you make the architecture reported on or reported by that um, 
that top folder right there. So this is reported by zero Dota viewpoints. And if you look here, it'll go right to this one, zero Dota viewpoints. Okay. You only have to make one relationship, and that allows you to to create then any of these viewpoints that are in there. Okay. The reason you have to bring in the hierarchies, the additional hierarchy definitions, is because when you make a viewpoint, a DODAF viewpoint, those hierarchy definitions are used in those DODAF viewpoints. So those have to be included in the model as well as the documents. Any questions on that? I do have a few. They're actually pouring in right now. Um, here's one from Robert. Um, can you share a little more on the initial input data that generates the DODAF 2.0 viewpoints? Um, I'm not sure, Robert, if you're asking how I put data in my model or where we decided what to make, how to make those DODAF 2.0 viewpoints, what, what goes into making the viewpoints. So let me just let me just say this. What we did to create how I was going to answer a viewpoint in in core, how I was going to construct a viewpoint, is I went back to the DODAT, the DOD architecture framework. And if it said in that framework description that I have to provide the description of the capabilities and the time frame or the whatever, um, I don't know why that popped up. Um, if it said, if, if the DODAF architecture framework version 2.0 said provide these these pieces of information then that's what I provided in there. Now here's what's happening in DOD. Every major command in DOD that has to do architectures is developing their own style manual for whatever reason I don't know and they are adding additional bits of information that they feel are necessary in their DODAF views. We are complying with the Secretary of Defense's you know requirements for DODAF. So that may be one thing that people are seeing. So now let me ask the other question. How do I get the information in the project, the core project, in order to populate those views. If I look here and I pick a, a view, I'm going to go to just, I'm going to pick the capability viewpoint. Whenever you have a DODAF view selected here, if you click the script help file, you're going to, it will open up a document called Core 9 DODAF version 2.0 viewpoint definitions file. It's a help file. It's a word help file. That word help file provides a description of each and every view in core language, if you will. So for the CV1, which I picked, it's going to take the architecture and look at the relationships of the specified by capability. So any specified by capability in this architecture is going to give me the name, description, rationale, and benefit of that specified by capability. And it's also going to give me a capability hierarchy um, drawing. So right, one of the things you one of the things you want to Ron, do is open up that file. Go ahead. Sorry, I just wanted to say um, Robert did get back to me, and he said um, he wanted to know what kind or type of data creates them. So okay, so this is this is if you so I think uh, Robert, what I'm answering th th this is really the the crux of your of your question here is is what creates these different views, and this document describes the information in core that goes into each of those views. Okay, and it's based on the requirements that are in DODAF version 2.0. And I'm constantly reviewing these and looking for changes that come out as 2.0, 2, version 2.01 and version 2.02 come out and I'm constantly monitoring the uh, 
the practice area, if you will, to look for changes in how to, how we put these views together. So there's two ways to start here uh, to put information into an operational architecture. One is if you if you if your customer said I need to know I need a CV4 view, then you can go in here and figure out what things I have to put together into a CV4 in order to make in order to make a CV4 out of core. The other way I think is to start with um, go back to let me just go back to this uh, this chart here for a second. If you start here with populating making a name for that architecture, populating the missions and populating the capabilities that go into that architecture, that's the easiest way to start on doing this, doing one of these architectures. Um, so it, essentially here, let's, let me just run this, this capability vision view. You select that view, that script, select OK, it'll run, it'll ask you where you want to put it. Um, you allow me the moment here, I'll just uh, put this into my folder where all my other webinar stuff is so I don't confuse it with other things on my and I got an error because I had the CV1 open already I believe. <laughs> um, one thing about this is as you go back and forth between between your views um, you need to make sure you close the old view before you um, before you run the script again. Many times what happens is you'll run the CV1 and you'll say oh I didn't put that piece of information in there or I needed to change that description and so without closing that word view uh, that, that, that word file of the open CV1 you'll run the CV1 again and you'll get an error and you'll say oh why, why am I getting these errors? And it's because you've still got that open from the prior time. And now it opened fine because I made sure I had it closed. And so it comes up with this architecture specified by this capability. It goes through my capability tree. It gives me this description, rationale, and benefit as I said, and it only gives me the description rationale and benefit of the specify of the, of the capabilities that are specified by that architecture. These are all capabilities that I refined from this one architect this one capability I had up here. I'll run a different capability view. So this one talks about all the capabilities that I have in there and gives me the description, the rationale, and the benefits because the CV2 really has a different, a different uh, bit of information that goes into it. Now the information that's in the very beginning of this, of any of these, of any of these views, comes from the text document or the text part of the view. So if I go to capability view and I go to CV2, you'll see that the text that's in here is the opening paragraph text that's in the view. So if you had a particular set of information you wanted to provide as additional information on what is in the CV2 for this particular project, you have the freedom to put all sorts of things into this into this description box here. Not everything on this property page is used for, um, for um, DODAF views because this is a standard property page that's used in the in the overall document class many of these other these these other uh, attributes are used when we do um, standard documents for like uh, SRS or an SSDD or whatever but the property page stays the same for the entire class So Eva, I'm going to stop here. See if there's any any final questions. We're coming up to an hour. Um, again, the big key here is go to the pick a Dodaf view and open this script help file.
and this script help file provides you a wealth of information about how these views are put together in, in DOTEF. And we have any suggestions on how to change any of the views that are in here, certain things you'd like to see or think ought to be in there, just uh, send a comment to uh, customer support and Bethany will send them over to me and I'll look at other ways I can do some of these views. So, All right, absolutely. And um, that email to reach Bethany actually is support at vitecorp.com. Um, I have another question for you if you're ready, Ron. Sure. I can, I'm ready for questions here. That's why I want to stop a little early. <laughs> All right. Um, I have one from Lauren. Does the tool provide any validation of the views once created by the user? Validation to make sure the correct type of elements, relationships, etc., are used in each view. Um, we don't, okay, so there's no validation once the script is run. The validation is really you have to look at it and make sure you've got all the information captured in there that you wanted in there. The validation on our end is I have gone through each one of these view descriptions and made sure that this view description matches what or meets the requirement from the DODAF version 2.0. Um, specification, if you will, the framework. If you've made the relationships properly in here, in your in your um, in your project, they will they will come up. We do a lot of validation of the scripts to make sure the scripts actually pull in the information as as specified here. Next one, Eva. Sorry, Ron, I didn't know if you were finished yet. Yeah, that's, that's um, fine. Let's see. Uh, Mark would like for you to walk us through the help file. Okay. So the help file starts out with a just the index here of everything. This initial part here, this description here, this general part here, um, actually, this one here is an old Core 8 one, um, and, and this is a change that's coming out in the next uh, in the next release. But this this front matter here discusses exactly what I just showed you in in the bringing in the hierarchy uh, diagram or the the additional hierarchy uh, um, definitions and bringing in the uh, bringing in the uh, the documents here. Okay. So that's what's in the that's what the front matter is, and then we go through in alphabetical order the each of the viewpoints. So we have the all viewpoints, and down here you're going to have the capabilities. And what's next alphabetically is the uh, is the data and, and information viewpoints. So let me just take one here that we just looked at. So this. This is a brief description. This is a DODAF description. And actually, this little description block is the same description block that's up here. And frankly, I think that in practice, you would take all of this information out of this out of this description and put in your own description of what this CB2 is, because CB2 is a capability taxonomy. But what you want to say is it's the capability taxonomy for the blank architecture, okay, and put some information in there of, of what's going to happen in in this art or for this view in this art. What's the what's the view capturing for the architecture? And then what Core does is it again it goes to the architecture class. It it looks for a relationship of for every specified by capability for the architecture. It it will then put out the name the description, the rationale, the benefits, and the priority of that specified architecture and for uh, of that specified capability. And if that capability is refined by other capabilities, it will put out the name, description, rationale, benefits, and priority of all those refined capabilities. And then it will also put out your capability hierarchy diagram. Okay. Um, the reason it has architecture in here is because over here, I have tactical image management architecture. 
But if I made this, if I change this to the architecture that was the as is architecture, okay, and then let me make a new element, um, the Tim's to be architecture, okay. When I run the script, it's going to ask me which architecture do I want to do I want to report on. So whichever architecture you pick, which architecture do I want to pick? I'll pick this one. There's nothing in the 2B architecture because I haven't made any relationships to it. Okay. And then it'll run that CV2 again for me. Okay. This is for the, the Tim's architecture, right? So let me let me change that. Let me go back to the model here for a second. Tim's 2B, I will, first of all, this architecture has to be reported by that, right? And I'll make it, um, I'll have it uh, specify we specify by just this guy okay and so now that I have that I will run a CV2 on the Tim's 2B guy okay and you're only going to get that one you're only going to get the one. Oh, you know why? Because I have the, I have in that in this um, in the arc, I have all of these capabilities are related to one another. If I made a separate capability here for the Tim's to be capability one okay and if I related that capability and made it to be specifies the Tim's architecture then I'll go up here and remove this one and then I can run this architect run this again on the 2B I violated my own rule didn't I that I talked about a moment ago which was to make sure that those other ones were closed let me close my see I've got these open here I haven't executed all these scripts yet I haven't closed them all I mean Once you do this a little bit, you'll see how easy it is to create these. And I've done something wrong. I've got it. I think I've got it reported by twice on the DoDAV architecture. So, but that's that's fundamentally what what you need to do. Any other questions, Eva? I've got one last one for you. I know we're running a little bit over. Um, this one is from Lauren again. Are actual DoDAF views created by the user or auto-generated by the script? They're auto-generated by the script. In other words, I have a script right, here that... short and sweet. Yeah, it's just, you know, there's a script here in for each one of these, um, for each one of these um, viewpoints that pulls up a script. So, um, the uh, I won't get into the details of how that's done, but um, if you went into this into the um, if you went into where the script files are kept, you'd see a script for each one of these DoDAF views, and and literally all you do is you you import that that uh, template into this into the system and then run it. When when I talked about bringing in the hierarchy um, 
views and then bringing in the DODAF doc, def, document definition templates, you bring those in and now they're in there and then you just run the script. Anything else? Um, I think that wraps it up for today. Um, okay. I know there was a couple of questions that I um, didn't get to and I apologize to those people. Um, if, um, if you would like, you can visit our community site at community.vitechcorp.com and ask again there. Or you can uh, reach out um, to Ron uh, directly. And uh, Ron, do you mind if I send out your email? No, I think, it's, I think it was on the slides also. So if they go back and look at the presentation, they'll see it also. Yep, absolutely. That works. All right. Um, so I'm also going to uh, chat out the link to our next webinar, which is on um, this Thursday. And it is called Responding to Fire and Emergency Services with Model-Based Capability. And it's being presented by Michael Brett from Aerospace Concepts from Australia. So let me chat that out to you now. OK. And this link will just take you directly to the registration page. So we hope to see you there. And as I mentioned before, a recording of today's webinar will be posted in the resources section of our website within the next 24 hours. At the conclusion of this webinar, a survey will open on your screen. Please take a moment to give us feedback on today's presentation or any topics you would like to see covered in future webinars. We've added some new questions to help us determine the best time to hold our webinars. So please let us know what works best for you. So that wraps up today's presentation. I'd like to thank you all for joining us, and I wish you all a great afternoon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Eva.